Hey everybody, welcome back to DW's Chop Shop. I know it's been a while, but we've been waiting for parts to come back. We have a whole pile of parts back over here with heads, cams, intakes, carburetors, bronze oil drive gear pumps, all sorts of stuff. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pull this oil pump out. We're gonna go through it, and then we're also gonna put on the bronze drive gear from Hammer Performance. Um, for those of you that don't know, what we're doing to this 1992 Harley-Davidson Sportster 883 motor is we're putting a 1275 hammer kit on it and we sent the heads off to Hammer Performance and got the 100 horsepower package uh, done to those heads, which is bigger valves, stronger springs, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and then we're also going to put on a set of 560 cams in here. That'll be the next video. But let's get started and concentrate on this oil pump. So first thing you need to do is get your tech manual. Uh, for those of you that don't know where to get a tech manual, I like to use e-manual online and I'll go into that just a little bit more right here. All right, so like I said, you always need to have your tech manual with you. The easiest way to do that for me is I get my tech manuals from emanualsonline.com. So you can click here, it brings you to their website. Uh, today we're working on a 1992 Sportster. Click on a manual or you can click search all and it's going to bring up a whole bunch of manuals uh, i know this one's good i have it so we'll click on it we'll check this out you can see preview it's a good high quality tech manual where everything's clear right cool so then you add to cart you can see right here we own it they'll email you and these are some of my manuals here we're working with this sportster so let's go ahead and open that up and we'll see what it looks like as you can see this decent real good high quality information yeah, you can find whatever you need in here. It has it, it has all the good information. This is a legit service manual, 86 to 03. And you can find manuals for any of your motorcycles, any of your cars, any of your trucks, any of your boats, any of your home appliances on emanuals.com. And if you use the link and the discount code that is in the pinned comment and the descriptions, which is gonna be DWSHOP, DWSHOP2222, uh, that's going to get you 22% off site wide so you can seriously save some money there So let me know if that's something you guys are interested in, but let's get back to putting this Sportster together Okay, so now we know where to get a manual from we have a manual. It's printed off. I got everything I need right here This is a 1992 model. So we're using the 91 to 03 uh, pump model So first thing drain the oil tank got it wipe off the oil lines guy. Yeah, we're a little bit past all this uh, disassembly, remove the oil pump housing screws. So check this out, right? Your oil pump, if you look, these two screws, quarter inch Allen bolts, right? Well, 3 16ths or quarter 20s are what hold your pump in place. And then these other two hold it together. So let me show you what I mean by that. Big long screw. Okay, so now you can wiggle that out of the way and bam, oil pump. If you have your cams in, you're gonna have to fiddle with it a lot more. Nature of the beast. So now we'll look down here and we flip it over. Oh, hey, it looks just like that uh, diagram, doesn't it? Okay, so let's get this and this out. Okay. Okay, so oop, this pops right off. This is the top, back, bottom, whatever you want to call it. We'll set it off to the side. Now these gears in here come out, and a lot of times, you know, they're just held in by oil suction. So there we go. Give it a smack, and now this is the way the set came out. So we'll turn it upside down. This is just my way to keep track of things. And then we will unstack this tall set, and then we will unstack this spacer, and then we have our skinny set. Okay, now we're left with just the body. So what we're looking for in here, you know, we're looking around the edges for scrapes, nicks, anything you can catch with your fingernail. 
you run a screwdriver up and down in there, can you catch anything? Do you touch anything? No, no burrs. Okay, so that looks good. Now, let's pull this. And I'm looking at the insides. Plastic, that's off the rag. I'm looking in here, and I'm looking around the teeth. I'm looking for burrs, a piece of sand, a piece of dirt, a piece of anything that might have got in there. Okay, see there's some scuffing around the outside, but same thing. You know, similar to, think cross hatching, right? I can't catch a fingernail on it. Looks fine. Now let's look at the gear, right? Same thing, everything looks good, okay. Let's check this spacer plate. You can see where gears are rubbing on it, but that's what they're supposed to do. Everything looks good there. Let's check this one. I got no nicks, no scratches. Looking on the outside. Same thing, everything looks good. Let's check out this gear. Okay, smooth, everything looks pretty all right. I'll take it. Okay, nothing on the front, nothing on the back. All right, so let's check this piece out. Just think gasket, so you can see most of this bike, this bike is old, right? It's got 72,000 miles on it. I'm pretty sure this is all the original gaskets and such. So you do have some residue, but there's no pitting, right? I can't run my, catch my fingernail on anything. That'll work. And we will clean that off. So now we're gonna wanna get this O-ring out and we're going to clean all this stuff up. No reason not to replace that O-ring while we're in here. I have a complete gasket kit from Cosmetic. So I have the old O-ring and the new O-ring. I'll take the old one, throw it over there, take the new one, set it there. Done. Okay. Let's get this stuff cleaned up. Give me just a second. All right. Now that I am high as balls off a of brake cleaner fumes, let's go ahead and get this finished up. So to get this thing tossed back together, right there's a pretty easy parts diagram here so you're essentially this way also i guess if you want to get this this piece out in this case we don't need to if you look in there there's a little c-clip pull that clip off this will slide right out and that's all there is to it okay so let's see we'll take this and then as you can see we have the wider piece so that's going to slide in right and we will lube all this crap up Interesting, check, there we go. Interesting tidbit of information here is, uh, I think there's three iterations of this fuel pump, like 90, 98, and 07. And essentially what it is, is this thick piece just gets thicker, right? So this is an early model and I, want to say they had issues with scavenging and stuff stuff like that so on this earlier model here this is technically the weaker of the pumps but it'll work for our application we put the bronze drive gear on which we will so moving everything up plenty of assembly lube i was nice enough to spill a good chunk of it there can't use too much lube here now if you see here we got two flats and there's two flats on our shaft, so we line that up. Okay, and then you get to wiggle stuff around. 
until it pops in place. So let's pause right here for just a second. Let me show you how this pump actually works. So let me explain to you how this pump works. Oil is going to come in here, gravity feed, it'll be this way, so down to the bottom. But what it does, and you can kind of see that going on with this assembly lube here, right? So we just put some lube right there. Now watch. As we spin that lube, it gets compressed and compressed. See it's squeezing out the top in these portions and it's compressed. And that's going to, bam, launch it out and it's going to come up and it's going to go to the next level with this is the second level and from there it's going to go out and all over the engine right so that's it pretty easy that's all these pumps are a little gear driven gear pumps nice and easy super 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 common pumps and they're really good and they work well okay now let's put this second piece in spacer plate. Little spacer plate. If you look at this plate, you have two indexes, one fat, one skinny, right? This one's wide, this one's little. We'll get this cleaned up, we'll get it lubed up. And then if you look in here, get the focus. Yeah, right there you can see the ledge and that's the fat side. So Point. There we go, just like that. And we'll take this piece and it sits in there. Now we're flush with the top. Now we have this last gear here. Get it moved up real good. Match the flats up. Might have to move stuff around. So we get to the right spot. surface that's it give her a spin now you can see we are pumping oil right well pumping flu um, assembly lube and there's no grinding there's no tearing there's no clickety clanks all we're hearing is the sticky on the lube that's perfect so we'll rub a little bit of lube just what's on my fingers on this o-ring we'll place it in place there we go i will clean the lube off of this real quick all right so we have our o-ring in there that's our only sealing surface and you'll see when we put this on right it only fits one direction and that is like this so we will take our two Allen keys here. We'll put a little torque on them. Remember this is just aluminum, so you don't need to torque the piss out of it. Also, like I said, this is a really, really high mileage engine. I feel like I'm not the first one in there based off of this washer setup. This house not flush, but that's how it was when I took it off. That's how it's going to be when I put it back in. So bam. Now our oil pump is rebuilt, ready to rock and roll. We're going to set that off to the side. 
And let's replace this oil pump drive gear with the bronze one from Hammer Performance. And the reason you do that is in these higher horsepower models, this gear, right, is really hard and it has a lot of issues with getting like really, really tight and really, really loose. And I'll show you about all that here in a second. And as much as I hate to do this to you guys, you do need a special tool to get this thing off. And I hate saying go buy a special tool. But in this case, you have got to hold this in place. And you can't use power tools on here. Doing so can throw your crank off of true. And then we're going to go into a lot more detail. I don't want to do that. So we're going to use this hammer performance locking tool. Uh, these locking tools are also made by you know, gyms and any of the big Harley tool makers. Okay, so now we can't move the pinion at all. This is a 15 16 use a six pointed socket so you can make as much torque as possible. Yep. That's off. Now we'll pull this off and we should be able to slide all the gearing right off of here pretty easy. Oh yeah. Yep, I would say that came off pretty easy. Okay. And finally, our oil pump drive gear. As you can see, there's a keyed shaft in here. We're gonna leave the key in place. But if we look at this, you can see right in there, there's a good spot, but you can see where the teeth were wearing right on the top of the oil pump, right? You see all that shiny? That's what we're trying to give. We don't want these pieces of metal to fly through here. That's the tight and the loose that we're talking about. And this, this bronze one has a little bit more give. It's a little more malleable, right? So this can squeeze and kind of just give a little bit while it's riding on top of this much harder mating surface, right? Okay, so way to put this in. There's no front, there's no back. We don't need to lube this shaft up because we're not spinning on that shaft. I will, although, take a clean wire brush. Take a cleaner wire brush. Give these threads a good once over. Get any crud off of there. We'll break clean on everything. Wipe it all off again. Now our oil drive gear is gonna slide right into place. It's keyed, it only goes on one direction, doesn't matter where your pinion sets. Now I need you to look at this, right? Which how gently I'm tapping this on. It's just it's not a press fit, but it's just a little bit harder than I can push. So I'm barely using a flick of the wrist. You do not want to knock your engine out of true, right? And now it's seated. I'm barely, just barely tapping on anything, okay? And all I did was save my thumbs from sitting here and making grunt noises while I push. Next thing we're going to put on, if you notice, this key protrudes out just a little bit, and we got a little notch right here for it in our cam drive gear, right? 
So let's get this cleaned up. All right, and same thing, since this is keyed, it doesn't matter how we put it on, it's only gonna go in one way. You can see right here, we have our timing mark to set our actual cam timing, and bam, that's it, that's on, we're done. Next thing we need to do is put this nut back on, so I'm gonna clean this nut up. You see how there's some crud in there? Now this nut will probably go either way too, as you can see, it has flat spots on both sides, but whichever side is shiny is the side that was in the back, so we're gonna put that side in the back again. I'm gonna run it down by hand, make sure it goes on nice and easy. No hiccups, no burrs. It does. All right, and now we're gonna bring her back out. We're gonna put our tool back in place. You would torque this nut down to 35 to 40 foot pounds. Now, since we're using this bronze drive gear and I'm putting on the hammer performance kit, Hammer Dan himself says to torque this down to about 80 foot pounds. So I'm going to lock tight, blue lock tight the piss out of this. And I will get my torque wrench. All right. So I have a gear wrench torque wrench, so I want to set it to 80 foot pounds. There we go. That is where Hammer Dan wants this torque to. So that's where I'll torque it to. And let's finally put our oil pump in. So we have a clean gasket sealing surface down here. We have a nice shiny new gasket to go on right here. It goes this way. That's an oil pump in place. Next thing we're gonna do, if you guys wanna stick around to our next videos, we're gonna put these big old Andrews 560 cams in, and we're gonna go over how to clearance the cam chest, because we have a little bit of interference right here. So, yeah, stick around. We'll see you guys next time.